Yep, you saw me. There you go, guys. That's a fish. There you go, guys. That's unreal! Oh, this is such an awesome looking fish. Oh, yeah! All right, guys, check that out. I think I used a baby brush hog the last time we were here. Yeah, used a, uh... Oh, it was a, a salmon. No, it was a, it was a baby brush hog, but it was a... Uh, oh, no, that's watermelon. Watermelon seed. Oh, looks like we're not using the soup. Well, you're not using the soup. I can <laughs> Yeah. So I will set catfish rod. Really? I don't think we're putting steaks in this. How is this so soupy when an inch deep is... Thick gravel. Oh, look, one spot. So I'll let this thing go for a while before it actually, it actually sinks. Remember that grass island goes out pretty far. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to set this on the left side of it anyway. It, yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah, that's... That just hit bottom. Yeah, it's deep. What's up, everyone? Scott the Char Hammer here. It has been way too damn long and believe me when i say none of it is my fault but anyone who's watched the news for five minutes knows that we had historic wildfires this year and that pretty much shut down fishing in oregon for a good two three weeks just because of the smoke yeah christian and i were out fishing at a place on the long tom river with when the snow when the mm -hmm. yeah you can tell it's been a while since i've done this okay, let's do that again. <laughs> Yeah, we were out fishing on the Long Tom the night the smoke rolled in, and when we went there, you could see all the way to the Cascade Mountains, and you saw a little bit of smoke over the mountains. Didn't look like it was going to be any real big thing. Hour and a half into fishing, it turned into Mars. <laughs> Dark red sky, smoke everywhere, dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. So we are out on probably what hopefully isn't our last bass trip of the year. And that's just because so far it's been a mild autumn. But if you guys see this little, little pocket of water here behind me, you guys know what I'm going to drag through there. We got some rods going for some catfish because we've seen some pretty good sized carcasses at this place when we come fish like people catch them and throw them on the bank and I mean good sized fish probably well pound pound and a half but we are here for the nice big bass that are in this pond so stay tuned for the fish catches. Well when it's 90% humidity seriously this air is thick this dummy thick thick with two C's so I'm actually going to start out with a square bill because I know all the grass that's over here. And as you can see, I've made a slight modification to the square bill. Whee! Well, it looks like I'm in fact not throwing a square bill because that grass is a lot shallower than I thought it would be. So it turns out this island is just part soup, part sand. No. No. Sorry, you better detour. I'm not getting pooped on today. I heard something go off the surface right as I was walking up. No way. What I heard was in that little small pond. There we go. Yep. Regular old Senko. Weightless. Uh, baby bass. Uh, it's sort of like a watermelon green with a white bottom. Yeah, not the biggest, but I'll take it. Good size. Yeah, about a pound and a half. Maybe just maybe just under two pounds. Yeah, doing the doing my standard cadence, the let it fall, twitch, 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 let it fall. You know, different rhythms of twitching. Man, this fish was stuck good in the 
meaty side of its lip. Yeah, that's baby bass color. Man, I had to put some force to get that hook out. That fish was going nowhere. You were pegged pretty good. Which means I got to do this before the year's over. Oh, yes. All right, I'm kind of far away from the water, so I got to kind of torpedo you out there. Ready? One, two, three. There we go. And yep, you made it. All right. Oh, it feels good. I can't remember what I was doing, but I wasn't paying attention to the bite at all. And I just felt, I just felt the line take off. So I just, I didn't even set the hook. I just started reeling. Well, this one's already done for. One fish wonder. I've never been good with, with just a Sanko, with no weight. I've never seemed to cast it far enough. With that, the only advice I can give is make sure you leave the tip of your rod pointed in the direction you cast until the plastic hits the water because then the line has less resistance going through the guides so it gives you a little bit further to cast but then also uh i mean everything else just comes down to the usual ratio of rod action line diameter i'm getting about maybe 80 percent the range on a cast with this as i was when i was using the the daiwa tryon rod with the eight pound cx premium but this is definitely a far, sens far more sensitive setup. So I'm able to feel a lot more sacrificing some distance on a cast, which I think is, I think is a fair trade. And I need to tighten the drag. <laughs> yeah, depending on the type of line you're using with a Senko, if you're using an EWG hook, don't be afraid to cross the fish's eyes setting the hook. Oh man, I was in that hydrilla. Y you just spooked something. I saw something move off from where that landed. Don't think there's catfish over here, Captain. <laughs> well, what was it? Was it Wayne Gretzky that said you miss 100% of the bites you don't cast for? Wait, hockey. We might have cannibalistic fish because the one I landed on was a baby bass color Senko. And so far on this, Pumpkin seed watermelon flake. So far, nothing on this Senko. Oh! There was nothing but water underneath, underneath that grass. What'd you have? Apparently, I have a bass on there. <laughs> off, we're off the bottom. Oh, yeah. Well, it'll break down inside him. Well, cool. At least I caught one too. Yeah. I mean, didn't mean to. That wasn't what I was going for, but. I was going to say, I don't know if we can really consider this the rubber match, considering how this day's gone. Right. Like, you know, a couple of years ago we came here, I caught all the fish. Last time we came here, you caught all the fish. Now we've caught two fish of equal size. Yeah, well, I caught two. Oh, yeah. What's that smaller one in it? I don't know. It got greedy. Baby bass? Oh, it looks like I actually caught the little bass. No, that's a perch. You caught the perch, and the bass ate the perch you caught. <laughs> so I did catch two. Yeah. <laughs> but now we know there's also yellow perch in here. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's the first time I've ever actually seen that in person. And that makes sense, because when I caught that yellow perch at Waverly, my rod just, like, it bumped once, and then didn't move for like the next 45 minutes I left it in the water. And when I reeled it in, I had a perch that had just eaten it and just sat at the bottom. Another one. First cast with the black and blue Senko. I didn't even get a twitch that. I cast, turned to talk to you, and felt the bite. Yeah, this is a smaller one. Yeah, this guy's probably like three quarters a pound. I just switched to the darker color because he had less light. I didn't think I was gonna land one or even hook one that fast. Now, I've, I've heard of that, but I've never actually seen it. 
a novel fishing experience. Because Josiah at Sportsman's told me about once him and a buddy were uh, trout fishing. He hooked a trout off of power bait, little tiny treble hook, and was reeling it in, and a bass ate his trout. And he was using like really light gear and it was a pretty big bass like he could feel it was a big bass and they're just like i don't, I don't know what to do i don't know what to do and just i was like just just let it go see what happens so he just let the fish go for a while let the bass that ate his trout go and after a couple minutes of it just sitting there not moving he slowly reeled the bass in and reeled it all the way in and sure enough it was like a five pound bass ate a full-size trout when they pulled it out just the tail like the tip of its tail was sticking out of the fish's stomach well what annoys me is the only thing I brought that's perch colored is a lipless crankbait and I'm not running a lipless crankbait through this. Okay, that was a fish. I thought I was wrapped around one of these one of these pieces of grass in front of me. But then it actually started moving. I think this is the same fish. I'm not kidding. It's <laughs> it looks identical. This one's got a dent in its nose. Little cookie cutter bass out of here. I think last year when we came here, I fooled around too much. Now I'm just sticking to what I know works here. Frogs and senkos. And yeah, with good old Oregon winters, we don't change one thing. We still fish into the sunset. It's just Sunset comes a lot sooner, so I, I just decided to wait a little bit to record the outro. Considering what's happened this year with the fires and the smoke and how this changed some things for fishing, I'm actually surprised the fishing was that good for this trip. I mean, you could still see spots where there are just tons of ash deposit on the ground. Absolutely crazy summer. And then, yeah, Christian going for the double, catching the fish that caught a fish. Like I explained during the trip, I've I've heard of that happening before, I've just never actually seen it. Yeah, it was probably too dark, the camera probably didn't pick it up, but I was, I was trying to get the camera down the fish's mouth to that bass's mouth so you could see the tail of the perch sticking out and the hook or the line going in, you know, you know, the everything, all, everything else is in there somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, you can't intentionally fish that way in Oregon. You can't use live bait, but there are places in the country where it's actually pretty common for catfish fishing or for real big bass fishing for people to catch a little like shad or some sunfish species of some type and then just stab a big circle hook in its head or in the tail end and cast it out and use that as bait. And it's just going to sit there all injured and not able to get away. And big predatory fish is going to see that as a, bass, as a, as a big meal. Case in point, what that bass did, it saw Christian hook that little perch that he was trying to fish for catfish with the hook, and or with the worm on the hook, and perch ate it, couldn't get away. Bass is like, easy meal. So proof that bass are also really opportunistic feeders. If there's an easy meal, big enough, easy enough meal for them, they won't, they won't pass it by. But I want to know what you guys thought down in the comments below. Let me know if you guys have seen anything similar to that happen while you're out fishing. And again, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down there and the notify bell next to it and click all notifications so you'll be the first to see all the great content that's going to come from this channel. And check out my channel page. I got stuff organized and playlists for all the bass education and entertainment you could ask for. But not just bass, we also do plenty of trout fishing. We do salmon fishing, well, weather permitting. Surf fishing, pan fish fishing, car fishing. If it lives in water, I want to catch it and then show you guys how I did it. So like I said, if you're new, please subscribe. Other than that, I'm just going to say thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, tips up, tight lines, have fun fishing.